second or third day in August and we're out here building buck beds. Um, typically I like to build beds earlier in the year so that you can collect the year old buck that's been kicked out by his adult doe um, the end of May, first part of June. And that way you can collect several bucks as long as your property is better than the next and they have a spot to bed in. Um, in nature, a deer wants a secure spot and for a buck the most secure spot usually is the end of a point, the end of a ridge and where that point drops off. So this would be like the military crest. This is two thirds or a little bit more than two thirds the way up the hill. So the west is this direction. So in the winter we'll have a west or a northwest dominant wind here. We're going to put our dough beds close back over by the food source over behind us and the wind's going to come from the camera toward me so i want the wind coming over this buck's back this is the tree i'm going to use now this tree is a is a crab apple and crab apple makes a good tree for buck beds because of the canopy that it creates there's several trees that do this is a hedge apple crab apple wild plum um, cedar trees what they do is create a natural umbrella effect but i'm going to enhance that and what I'm going to do to these trees is I'm going to hinge cut them. And several things that will happen when you hinge cut, you're going to allow more sunlight to get to the ground. So your forbs that are growing in here, which is your wild raspberry, your beggar's lice, because of the fact that we are allowing more sunlight, there are some negative plants in here that will actually take over an area if we're not careful. And that would be honeysuckle bush or some of this wild, um, gooseberry here which is, is a deer food but they will take over and what we want is diversity so we we have to watch when we do open up an area with a lot of sunlight that that doesn't one species doesn't take over when i'm cutting a flat spot what i want to do is get as close to the tree for back cover as i can get for the deer but then the other problem that you have is it's digging into roots and I have not seen where a deer will lay on rocks or roots um, if they can avoid that. Some, sometimes if a deer or if a bed is not used, picked up on immediately by a deer, I will need to come back and do some maintenance to enhance it in the future to keep that spot vacant. And I will do that by using products called Ground Clear or Preen and what that's going to do is prevent plants from coming up in this bed in the future future so so in making a bed I want this flat but I don't want it to hold water because deer are not going to lay in in mud so the stuff that I'm digging off I will have to throw back away from it so I don't make a little pond here okay so I work my shovel it's a flat shovel and I work it back and forth a lot so that I can make sure I got a real good flat spot and don't have any just exposing fresh dirt in the timber will attract deer to that spot so then now the next step is for me to cut a log and i'll cut that log and lay them behind the tree here to have more back cover. So I'll cross them behind the tree like this to get a little bit more height and don't have to carry quite as big a log with me. And then you can kind of see in nature if you would pay attention when you find a big dominant bed this is getting real close to what we want. Again I've already cut the additional exit out this side. I would like to thicken up this back side a little bit more so I'll look around here and see if I can't find a few more small trees to hinge cut. And again, the purpose of hinge cutting a tree is browse down to the animal, screening cover, overhead canopy, allowing sunlight to get in. I mean, it's just multiple uses. And I, don't, I haven't explained. A hinge cut tree, what I'm doing is cutting halfway through the tree, taking the tip of my saw, hollowing out the heartwood, and leaving the cambium layer attached, which is just under the bark. 
And so it's still able to get at least half the nutrients that it had been getting in the past. I don't want any of these trees to die so I don't have to come back in here in the future and cut more and doctor up this area. Um, so again, it provides unbelievable amount of food to the deer because most timbers, especially ones that have had cattle run through them and had um, different types of timber management practices are just wide open timber that's sterile to deer because Anything above four feet is almost worthless. Okay, so the principles of making a buck bed are flat spot, secured area, overhead canopy, back cover, on a hillside looking downhill with the dominant wind across his back. And that's what we have done here is imitated a natural bed. And we, can, we will keep enhancing this until a buck actually takes this spot over. But this is how you build a buck bed. Thank you.